packing orders today, so I thought I'd just record the whole process to show you how I box things to send them mostly abroad. Most of my orders go to either the States or Canada. So the first step, once something's come out of the kiln, uh, is I sound the bottom. Diamond core tools, um, sanding pad. This is the flexible 120 grit because I burnish the bottom of the cup so I don't need too much to get smooth. So that means they're now nice and smooth to touch. Uh, this is the Giffen grip in case you're not familiar with them. Um, that's it, so then I'll go and rinse this off and let it dry because you can sort of see the, the liquid. Oh, should say, always get these wet before. Don't dry sand clay. Um, make sure everything's wet so you can sort of, you can see that that's sopping wet. Because otherwise you'll put clay dust in the air. By doing it like this, it's all clay slurry that I can go and rinse off. So I'll quickly talk through what I've got here, what I used to pack before I um, do the process. Starting with the cardboard box, this is uh, a 200 by 140 by 140 mil box, that's the internal size. The external size would be more like 210 by 170 by 160. And the 160 is important because in the UK, 160 is the cutoff point for a small parcel. So 160 tall and you'll get significantly cheaper prices. If you go 165, you're in the next category and it can add half again as much to the prices. So it's really worth making sure you can find boxes that fit your work but come in under 160 height. Um, so yeah, that's the box. Then I use biodegradable packing peanuts. Firstly, they're good for the environment because they're, they're literally just cornstarch, they're biodegradable, they're not plastic. Um, the other thing I really like about them is they compress significantly more than the, um, the solid polystyrene ones will. And that's quite useful because the saying for packing things is if it shakes it breaks and what that means is you can compress those in to form almost like the molded foam packaging you get the really expensive things but you can do that by just compressing them which you can't do as well for um, the polystyrene ones i use bubble wrap these are 500 mil um, square perforated sheets it's worth paying more for the perforation because it makes life so much easier than cutting each one to length. And this is a really nice size. It, for mugs, I fold it in half, um, and then it works perfectly. For bowls, I either use it as, a, as one sheet, or if it's in a bigger bowl, you can use several sheets in one length and wrap it. But for anything that's not gigantic, this is a really nice size, and the perforations are very useful. Paper tape. Uh, the kind that's already glued so this is um, biodegradable and recyclable as well so the box will be other than the plastic sleeve and I'm moving away from these but I stick the labels on the plastic sleeve so at the moment you've got to remove that for it to be recycled but, uh, but otherwise it would be completely recyclable uh, you can get them personalised which I have done you've got to order quite a few rolls in one go to get that but it's not actually much more money once you've done that uh, I haven't found an alternative for the bubble wrap that's um, biodegradable and works as well. Um, so for the moment I'm still using that. Um, I'm looking at alternatives but at the moment this works best. And my philosophy on that is that this is part recycled, it's recyclable, reusable, but more importantly the main thing is that you're not making a piece twice and flying it across the world twice. See, what you want is the most effective packing material rather than something that doesn't work but is biodegradable and then you keep having things break. So, what I do to pack things, fold it in half the mugs, um, fold it across, and I use sellotape for this because, again, you know, because this part isn't um, Recycle uh, biodegradable anyway using sellotape just make sure it stays in place so that is now lots of padding around the handle padding elsewhere you don't necessarily need to do that but if customs open your parcel um, they won't put it back 
properly. So you can put a mug in the middle without anything around it, put it in the middle of the box and the packing peanuts will protect it. But if someone opens it to inspect it and they don't put it back where you put it and put it back just sitting on top, um, it will break in transit. That up, but so then I will just take cross stick that. Then a layer of packing peanuts at the bottom, so that's the cushioning. A little bit more around the side there, and then really nestle it in there, making sure you've got a gap on all sides. This is the nice thing with these boxes is um, there is literally like an inch and a half on all sides um, and it can't move and the cushioning will protect it. I've never had a mug that wasn't opened by customs and put back badly. Packed like this, arrived broken. Um, and the other thing to say is that a lot of people double box them, but um, especially with postage costs going up at the moment because uh, Trump's reclassified the USA and everything that's going on with USPS. Um, it doesn't matter so much for domestic because as mentioned, uh, so long as the height is under 16, you're in a uh, price category. But for international orders, the price goes up with box increase size. So I could double box it, but what that means is that there is, being flown less efficiently, so it's worse for the environment in that sense. Um, it costs me more, or costs the customer more, depending on how you look at it. And this way, they won't break anyway. So a double box, sure, that it's more protected if someone, if customs open it and pack it badly, or someone really jumps on the box. But these, this way of packing is basically survive anything so I don't bother double boxing I go with the most efficiently small box that I can find um, which for mugs is this and just make sure you pack it all in you really want to when you're squeezing the lid down it should be you compress the lid down into it and then tape around and that is good to go that will survive just about anything um, and it's the cheapest, most efficient, and most environmentally friendly way that I've found to send things. And I'm always looking to improve this, but at the moment, the only improvement that I'm making in the short term is I have been using plastic document sleeves because um, I don't have a label printer, but I'm gonna get a label printer, so I'll be printing paper labels rather than paper labels in a plastic sleeve because that just means that my customer at the end of it has to tear the sleeve off in order to recycle this um, and so the whole thing will be recyclable and I think that's everything.